In this tutorial, I am going to show you how to create a sticky transparent header with a logo change on scroll as well as a background color on scroll, just like this over here. This sticky transparent header will be responsive on mobile devices, just like you see over right here. This is on a Galaxy Fold 2. When I scroll, beautiful, our transparent header shows up with our logo changing on scroll and as well as our background color. If that is something that you're interested in, let's jump straight into the video. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Hamza. In this tutorial to create our sticky transparent header with a logo change and background change on scroll, we will need only one plugin and that is the Elementor Pro plugin. With Elementor Pro, then we'll be able to create our headers. So inside my Elementor under templates, I'm able to go to the theme builder under the header option. I'll add a new header. I'll not use any of the templates or blocks. So I'll close over that pop-up. I'll add a new section. It's going to be a three column section. Awesome. With the section selected, I'm going to adjust the height of that section with a minimum height of 100 pixels. I'll come back here to the style option and I'm going to add a background type and that is going to be our background color. Now I'll come back to the widgets and I'll pick up my heading widget and that will be for our site logo. Then I'll pick up another widget and that will be for our social media icons. Then I'll pick up the last widget and that will be for our navigation. For our logo, we'll use the HTML tag of H1 and under style, we're going to give it a text color of white. And for typography, we are going to choose a font face called Fugaz or Fugaz, I think it's Fugaz 1. Font weight is 700 and it will be uppercase and the font size will be 50 pixels. I'll select my social media icons. I'll come to style and the size will be here 15. The color will be the custom color on hover. Primary color will be white. Secondary color is going to be a black and hover animation will be a shrink effect. Under advanced border and for the border it will be a dashed border with a width of one on the left and a color of white which is a transparent white then we'll have a dashed border on the left hand side of our icons widget i'll come back to the content and i'll align the icons on the left hand side i'll make the shape for the icons to be a circle and the columns will stay auto now over here you can add different items for social media platforms. For example, if I want to add like another platform, I go to the icon library and look up for instance, Instagram. I'll insert the Instagram logo and there we are. But I don't want to have Instagram. I'll leave the default icons over there. Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. You can as well link up those items to your social media platforms. For example, if I click on the Facebook icon, I can add my Facebook URL. For example, facebook.com forward slash gotekyg. Now let's go and style up our nav widget. Select the navigation widget. Make sure that you select your menu. This is the main menu that you created under the appearance section in your WordPress website. If you don't know how to do that, just simply command E and then you'll jump to the menus area. And here you're able to create a new menu or simply edit the existing menu by adding or removing widgets. Simply save the menu. And once you're back into your Elementor website, you'll be able to select that menu from this drop down here. All right, so for our layout, I want it to stay horizontal and I want our menu to be aligned on the left hand side. I'll leave the breakpoint to be on the tablet device of 1024 pixels. The alignment will stay aside and the toggle button will be a hamburger. Then for the toggle align, this will be on the right hand side. This is what we are trying to do. For example, under responsive options, I'll choose a tablet device. 
if we align it on the right hand side it will keep on the right hand side if we align it on the left hand side there the toggle button comes over right here we'll leave it on the right hand side back into our desktop under style i'll exit the responsive mode select my nav widget under typography i'm going to set this to my typeface for guards one pixels will be 22 pixels and it's going to be transform uppercase I'll change the text color to white and I'll increase on the column size of the nav widget. You can as well increase on the size of the columns for each individual column right inside here. For example, I may want to have my social media icons nearer to the logo, just like this over here. Or you can simply select the column and enter in a specific figure. For example, I want it to take over 60% of the whole section width. With our nav widget selected, come to the hover option and change the text color to the color of your preference. The same for the active color. And since we're not going to be using a pointer in our nav widget, so we don't need to have the pointer. To remove this pointer, we're going to come back here to the content, pointer option, instead of underline, we're going to make it none. Now that way we won't have a pointer on hover on our menu. You can go ahead and make custom changes for the drop down and the toggle button. Let's go and make some changes for our toggle button. For example, if I view this on a tablet, we want that our toggle button will be white in color. So under toggle, the color is going to be white and the background color is going to be a transparent color. As well, we'll select our first column and increase the size of that column so that our logo is more visible and clear. So we'll give it like 30%. This section will take like about a 20 and the other 50 we allocate it to the nav widget we can add some padding on the left and right hand side of our logo so we select our heading widget come to advanced unlink the values and on the left hand side we will add an em of one the same you can go ahead and set up for your mobile device for example over here I'll first of all reduce on the size of the heading, come back to style, typography, instead of it being 50, we'll make it 25. Come back to content, we'll center that. And now we're going to make these other columns to take just 50% and this other column to take over 50%. I'll select my column that is holding the social media icons, come to advanced, I'm going to unlink the values and I'll select EM for the padding. On the left hand side, I'll add a 4 and the bottom, I'll add a 1. Select our column holding the nav widget, come to advanced, unlink the values, select EM for the padding and add a 4 for the right hand side and that will position our nav widget just like this over here. So far all looks good, I'll exit the responsive mode. When you look at our homepage, this is the kind of heading we are having right now. This heading is from the Cadence theme. So when I come back here to my Elementor editor, I'm going to publish my header. I'll add a condition and I want it to display on the entire website. Now, when I come back over here, I reload the header or I reload my website, sorry. Awesome. Now we have our header showing up. So how do we make our header sticky and transparent and change a logo on the scroll? First of all, we are going to add another logo that will show up once someone starts scrolling. We are going to select our heading widget and I'm going to duplicate this heading. It can be an image widget that you're using to display your logo. In this case, I prefer to use text as my website logo. I'm going to rename the first logo. So this is going to be white logo. I'll name the second logo as gradient logo. Now let's first give our second logo a gradient. So I'll select the logo. I'll come to the advanced option under CSS or under custom CSS. So I'll add my CSS code over here. And just to explain to you, the gradient you see over here should work as a background in our heading widget. But in this case, we masked it and we're using it as a text color. So what I'm going to do is now copy our class. I'm going to come to the advanced option. I'll paste my class. Make sure that you remove the dot before the class. 
Now I'm going to reposition these two logos that we only have the white logo showing up by default but once the heading starts to get sticky then the gradient logo shows up. To do that we are going to play with two things the Z index and the custom positioning. I'll select my white logo first, I'll come to advanced, under positioning, we'll give it an absolute position and align it to the right hand side. I'll give it a 10 but negative and for the vertical offset we're going to select the bottom option. You can as well continue play along with these values to make sure that your logo overlaps the other logo just like this over here. With still the white logo selected I'm going to come to advanced and I'm going to give it a Z index of 2. Then come here to the gradient logo I'm going to come to the Z index and I'll make it 1. That helps us position our white logo on top of the gradient logo. For example if now we give the gradient logo a higher Z index of let me say 3 it will automatically come to the top of the white logo but I want to keep it 1. We will now add sticky effects for our header. I'll select my header under advanced motion effects I'm going to enable a sticky header on top. You can add or remove different devices where you want your sticky headers to appear or not to appear. For the offset effects I'll set it to be 350. This tells the header to show the sticky effects after 350 pixels of scrolling. Under entrance animation we are going to choose fade in and we'll leave it on normal. We will now go to the custom CSS option and I'll add this CSS snippet and inside our CSS snippet 1 it's going to enable that we have a different background once our header gets sticky. Then we'll hide the white logo once the header turns sticky and then we'll show the gradient logo once the header is sticky. So there are two things you have to note right here. We have to give a class for our white logo and the gradient logo and the classes I gave in this case are white logo and under the white logo advanced option CSS class I added that class but without the period sign. Same for the gradient logo this over here select your gradient logo widget and over here we already added that CSS class. Now let me update I'll come to our page or our home page I'll reload we have our header with a fade in animation. Now let me scroll after 350 pixels. Our sticky header shows up with our transparent background. Maybe you're asking how do we get this color for the transparent background. Back into our editor. This is the color code for the transparent background. And to get that kind of transparent background, for example, when I choose this color, let me just add over here some default text under style. This is the initial color right here. I simply just got a transparent version of that color then copied that color code came back here into my editor select the header widget under custom CSS then you can paste that color over right here or the color code and that's how you're able to achieve a transparent color just like this over here. Now let's work on our logo to see that it is positioned well. I'll delete this section. I'll select my white logo. When you look over here in the preview, you realize that our logo is simply down. That means that we are going to work on the vertical offset. So under positioning, for the vertical orientation, I'm going to add my 15, negative 15. I'll update and come back here to our home page, our reload. And let's see how that looks like. Beautiful. Now when I scroll after 350 pixels, the effects show up. Awesome. Now we have our sticky transparent header with a logo changing on scroll as well as our background color changing on scroll. Let's have a look at how our header looks like on mobile devices. Logo changes. We can still do some work to make sure that the logo doesn't make those movements. Let me look at another device. This is on a Galaxy Fold 2. When I scroll, beautiful. Our transparent header shows up with our logo changing on scroll and as well as our background color. Back inside the editor, with our white logo selected, 
Under Advanced Positioning, the horizontal orientation by default on desktop we have set this to negative 10. The vertical orientation is negative 15. But for the mobile device, I have had to set this to the horizontal orientation to 0 and the vertical orientation to negative 8 so that we don't have the logo shifting as we are scrolling. Now when we come back over here on our on our preview site on the mobile device, now when I scroll, you realize that our logo is no longer shifting. Awesome. I'll be leaving the links to the CSS codes and Elementor Pro if you don't have it already in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching, have a good time and goodbye.